Sasuranandana Bajajana Ranjana Chasuranandana Bajajana Ranjana Chamona Chira Bona Chari Chaya Radha Madhava Tunja Bihari Chaya Radha Madhava Tunja Bihari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Varadhari Gopi Janna Bala Bhagiri Varadhari Sura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Sura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Shamana Chira Bona Chari Chira Bona Chari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Chaya Gopi Jana Balabha Giri Varadhari Sura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Sura Nandana Bajajana Ranjana Chavana Tira Bona Chari Yamuna Tira Bona Chari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Om Vishnu Pada, Paramahansa Paribhajika Charja Stotara Sata Sri Sri Mat, Divine Great Eti Bhakti Vrana Goswami Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jaya Om Vishnu Pada, Paramahansa Paribhajika Charja Stotara Sata Sri Sri Mat, Sivan Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrindiki Jai, Iskan Founder at Charge of Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Nama Charge of Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Sego Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Sri Radhikadara Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindiki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gogopinata Shama Kundarada Kundagiri Govardhana Ki Jai, Sri Sri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai, Nabhadweep Dham Ki Jai, Sri Sri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Sri Sri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Tulasi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Ganga Maya ki jai, Jamuna Maya ki jai, Ganga Maya ki jai, Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Narayanam naramaskricham naram chairam naram chaivam narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tato jaya mudirayat nasta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Shloka, Bhavati Bhaktir Naishtiki. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Uh, is it third canto? Yeah, 12th chapter, 33rd verse. 32nd verse? Okay. Does my namo bhagavate ya idam vena Rochisa Atmasam Vyanjayam Asa Sadharmam Patum Arhiti Tasmainamo Bhagavate Yaidam Svena Rochisa Atmasam Vyanjayam Asa Sadarman Patumarati Tasmainamo Bhagavate Yaidam Svena Rochisa Atmastam Vyagya Janam Asa Sadarman Patumarati Tasmainamo Bhagavate Yaidam Svena Rochisa Admastam Vyanjayamasa Sadarmam Patumarati Yaidam Svena Rochisa Atmastam Vyagyanam Rasa Sadhanam Patumarati Tasmanam Bhagavate Yaidam Svena Rochisa Atmastam Vyagyayam Srasa Sadhanam Patumarati Tasmainamon Bhagavate Yaidam Svena Rochisa Armastam Vyajayamasa Sadarmam Patumarati Tasmai unto him Namaha obeisances Bhagavate unto the personality of Godhead Yaha, who, idam, this, Vena, by his own, Rochisa, effulgence, Atmastam, situated in himself, Vyanjayam, Vyanjayam Asa, has manifested, Saha, he, Dharmam, religion, Patum for protection. Arati may kindly do so. Translation Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, who, by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. May he also protect religion for all goodness. Responsibly, let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the Personality of Godhead, who, by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. He may also protect religion for all goodness. Lust for sexual intercourse is so strong that it appears herein that Brahma could not be dissuaded from his determination in spite of the appeal by his great sons like Marichi. Therefore, 
the great sons began to pray to the Supreme Lord for the good sense of Brahma. It is only by the grace of the Supreme Lord that one can be protected from the allurement of lusty material desires. The Lord gives protection <clears throat> to devotees who are always engaged in his transcendental loving service and by his causeless mercy, he forgives the accidental fall down of a devotee. Therefore, sages like Marichi prayed for the mercy of the Lord and their prayer was fruitful. The verse again by Srila Prabhupada, let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead who, by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. May he also protect religion for all goodness. Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Mukam Karoti Bachalam Bangam Mungaya Tegirim Yat Kripatara Hambande Sri Guru Nitarane So the demigods are praying for Brahma's uh, good sense. And uh, it's, it's notable that even Brahma, who is the, the father of this universe, is able to commit errors on the strength of having uh, sexual desire. And Prabhupada has often quoted the proverb, the, well, the first half of it anyway, of to err is human. The second part is to forgive is divine. Then the, the, uh, there was a, a walk when Srila Prabhupada was, was talking with devotees, and one devotee asked him, how is it that Brahma, who's the head of our sampradaya, who's a very elevated person, who's the, the father of the universe, could have sexual desire. And uh, Prabhupada kind of didn't, didn't uh, respond in detail. He just kind of um, took it in stride, saying, well, that's the nature of the material world or something like that. So the material world is like this. And, and in another uh, kalpa, Brahma had to uh, throw off this body because it, he, he realized that it was a very sinful thing to do in, this, in the present kalpa. When he was uh, lusting after his own daughter, he was out of control and chasing after her. And, and, and uh, as it's stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam, he, uh, he ran before some, some of the great sages in meditation. They, they saw this spectacle of Rama lusting after his own daughter. So he became very uh, um, remorseful and later on uh, got a new body that was uh, able, in the new body he was able to have, to see that some of his uh, creatures had uh, sexual desires. So he created uh, a male and female devotee, Satarupa and, and, and uh, her husband, uh, Svayam Bhuvamanu, I think it was. And they were able to progenate the entire universe because they, they, they were a, a, a union of male and female. So even though it is a great uh, thing, and this is confirmed in the, in the, in the um, Brahma Samhita, or in the, uh, later on in the, in the um, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, that, uh, that, uh, that even if one has a fall down like this, one can be excused by the mercy of Krishna and can, in the next birth, take, birth in a higher family or a family of devotees. So, uh, Brahma had to give up this, this material body and, and as, it's, as it's said in the Bhagavatam, it was later manifested as fog and darkness. Fog and darkness being um, uh, 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 unreliable un, uh, and unpleasant for, for the living entities. Uh, so the, uh, the, when when uh, the Rathi Yatra was was uh, taking the, the first Rathi Yatra in Los Angeles, which took place in 1976, there was a, a Rathi Yatra in in um, in New York City in Manhattan. Some of you have probably heard this story before, but now I have have heard it from the the, the, uh, the I've got the source. The source was a devotee named uh, Toshan Krishna, and in his uh, a rendering of this. There was a, a lot owned by the Pennsylvania Railway on the, they had to find a place that was close to the starting point of, uh, of, of the Rathiatra in New York, which was 59th Street and 5th Avenue. 
So they looked and looked and couldn't find anything. And, and finding any empty lots in, in, uh, in Manhattan is, is v extremely difficult. So they finally found one uh, on, on, the, on the far west side overlooking the, the Hudson River. And, uh, but it was owned by Pennsylvania Railroad. And Pennsylvania Railroad was then owned by none other than Donald J. Trump, the former president of the United States. So uh, they uh, made an appeal and wrote a letter, Toshan Krishna, uh, some, some devotees wrote a letter to ask if they could use that parking lot to construct the Rathayatra carts. And uh, the secretary answered the letter saying, well, you can ask him, but he's probably going to say no because he doesn't say yes to requests like this. Then about a few days later, uh, the secretary phoned the devotees and said that, well, he said yes. He said a very unusual thing happened. He said yes. And, and uh, she said that if you want to come here and get the, uh, the papers with his signature on it, you can do that. And so they came a few days later with prashadam and, uh, and some pleasing words. And, and he ate, the, according to the secretary, ate some of the, the what, he, what she called the food that they brought and signed the paper. So this, this uh, Rathayatra cart was, uh, b there's more to this story, I'm not going to tell it all, but uh, th th there's more to this. This cart was built and uh, it became the, the, uh, the Rathayatra in New York that started at 59th Street and, and, uh, and 5th Avenue. And it was a very glorious Rathayatra. Actually, to get the, uh, this, the uh, street, 5th Avenue in Manhattan, is, is, very, is a very unusual and very big thing. It's kind of reserved. They have what they call the Macy's Day Parade. Macy's is a big, de famous department store in uh, in Manhattan. And for the the, uh, the what they call the ticker tape parades after the World Wars One and Two, they used to go down Fifth Avenue. So somehow the devotees, well, they thought, we'll just try. They, all they can do is say no. They tried, and somehow or other, the the person who signed off on this said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to give this to you. And he signed the paper, and they got Fifth Avenue. And that's that. To, to this day, as far as I know, that's the route. And it's, it's, it's probably one of the main thoroughfares in Manhattan. It's quite wide, and it's, uh, it's, it's very famous, Fifth Avenue. There's many uh, uh, very uh, well-to-do department stores on that street, and including the uh, um, Apple headquarters, I think, is located on 59th and Fifth Avenue. And uh, it's, it's in a building called the Chrysler Building. <laughs> And uh, it, uh, but they have a big cube on the outside representing Apple. Anyway, that, that was a very successful Rathayatra uh, parade. Um, so this took place, and of course, m many of us have heard this story, but this is an actual uh, uh, recount of the story based on, on one person's recollection of what happened, who was there. And uh, it, it actually took place. So the Rathayatras, uh, were, were started by Prabhupada uh, when he lived uh, in, in, in his parents' house. He had a miniature uh, chariot, which he pulled, and the neighbors all pitched in and helped. So it began quite early on, in, uh, in about, 18, uh, about early in 1900, uh, the Rathiatras. And, and Prabhupada was very keen on the Rathiatras. And when he saw that this first Rathiatra was in, that was held in Los Angeles, uh, it was before the era of cell phones. Prabhupada was sent a color photographs of the of the carts, and uh, he said, one of the things he said, we have never seen such carts. And he was having a darshan at the time, and from what I've been told, uh, he asked all the devotees to leave so that he could meditate on the on the photographs of the Rathayatra in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is one of the largest cities in the United States, and uh, this this Rathayatra took place right on the uh, ocean front. It's a, it was in Santa Monica and Los Angeles, both cities. Uh, they're kind of adjacent to each other. And uh, the, the oceanfront walk is a walkway that goes just in front of the, of the ocean. So the Rathayatra, it started out as a very cloudy day. And uh, a reporter from the Los Angeles Times wrote it up about four days earlier. And it wasn't published. And when I asked her why it wasn't published, she said, I don't know, but I'm not very happy about it. Anyway, the, there was a lot of opposition to the Hare Krishnas in, in those early days. So this was in 1996. And so the Rathayatra took place, and it was one of the biggest Rathayatras ever to be held in, in, uh, in the world. Uh, there, there was a, a four-acre sort of uh, 
um, uh, lawn, uh, grass lawn in front of the uh, ocean where, where the Atharyata uh, uh, different, different positions were located. There was a, a food booth, there were two food, three food booths. Uh, there was a, a, a standing thing that you could stand in and, and uh, look like you were a devotee. You put your face in it and, and the rest of the, the, the cardboard was, was a devotee dress. And, uh, and there was the, uh, the changing bodies uh, exhibit was brought there. And, uh, and uh, just like here, there are many signs telling you which way to go to the different places. There, was, there were signs all over that area to say where you would go to, to uh, get food and where you would go to see the different exhibits. So it was a very successful thing. And, um, and many people came. And it was said that 100,000 people came. I don't think there were that many, but there were quite a few. One of the uh, people who came were the parents of Jayananda. And uh, they, ha they had come all the way from uh, Denver, Colorado, which is uh, quite a ways away. It's, it's about 1,400 kilometers away from Los Angeles. And somehow or other, this was reported on the news. And the news reporter happened to, uh, of all the thousands of people who were there, happened to find Mr. and Mrs. Kaur. And uh, she kind of thought they were different because they were older, older people. And she asked them, why have, are you here? And then they told her that uh, they were from Grand Junction, Colorado, and uh, that their son had built these carts, or had designed these carts, not built them, designed them, and that he was a, a mechanical engineer, and that he uh, had departed about three or four months earlier. And so this, this uh, was a very interesting uh, story, and uh, it was told on the, on the uh, evening news. So we all gathered. When I say we all, that was myself, and a few devotees that were in, in Rameshwar's quarters to uh, watch the, the 11.30 news. And there was a reporter, his name was uh, somebody Bradley. And right behind him uh, on this story, I mean, they usually talk about airplane crashes and people dying and, and uh, who, who won the, the uh, football game or the baseball game or something like that. Uh, and the Ratha Yatra, which was held on Indian Independence Day, the 15th of August, was a, a very, a very special event. So somehow or other, it was broadcast, even though they 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 they, they broadcast uh, very negative things, and uh, and they they uh, showed this. This reporter's name was Love Joy, Karen Love Joy. That was her name, and uh, and she was eating a lot of samosas. There was a, a free food booth, and and the samosas were being sold in other booths, and she told me she interviewed me and other people that this was the best festival she'd ever attended. This was on the news. And so we were, we were watching on television, and then we saw at about, uh, this was only about a 10-minute broadcast, she encountered Mr. and Mrs. Kaur, and she asked them why they'd come here, and they told her. And that became the, the, uh, the, new, the, uh, the sound bite of the evening news, that, that, that the person who built these chariots had uh, departed a few months earlier, and that his still-living parents had come all the way from Grand Junction to Los Angeles to see the, the festival. So it was a very successful, and that was kind of like the, the cream on the cake, which made the whole festival very worthwhile. It was very difficult. Actually, we had to uh, approach about 10 or many, many more, probably close to 20 different agencies in Los Angeles to get the permission. We had to get permission from the police department, permission from the, the uh, traffic department, permission from uh, the, uh, you know all different departments. And we put banners up all over the city, about 20 banners that said, Festival of the Chariots, free feast for, for 10,000 people. And uh, we, we put them up at night because actually, technically speaking, it wasn't quite uh, according to the, the laws of Los Angeles. The banners were strung across from one uh, uh, pole, light pole, to another light pole. And we learned later that the law actually for, forbade that. You had to to put the banners on uh, in, in, in a vertical position. So they just stuck out a little bit from, from the pole. You wouldn't a be able to string them across the poles. But we rented a, uh, a what they call a, a cherry picker. It's a, a device that goes up high. And we, we put them up ourselves in all the, the uh, busy intersections of Los Angeles so that people would know about it. And it was a very successful event because a lot of people did come to the Rath Theater in Los Angeles. Uh, right before the event, at about six or seven o'clock in the morning, the fire department was, was summoned 
And they came and they, they said, well, actually, you can't have this festival because these tents that you got from India, they were shamayanas of different colors, are, are not waterproof. And he put a, a, a match to, to one of them and it, it uh, went on fire. He, and he said, but, I, but at the same time, I don't want to cancel this festival. So if you can get a water hose that's 200 feet long and put it in this tap on the, on the grounds, then I'll, then I'll let you have the festival. So being a, a, a Sunday morning at 6 a.m., it was pretty difficult to find a fire hose. So somehow or other, we found a, a department store that was open and had a fire hose, and, and it wasn't quite long enough, so we had to get two hoses that were about 50 feet each and, 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 and uh, strung them together or, or, um, uh, or put them together uh, with, with, a, you know, the, with a screw on, they screwed together somehow or other. And then, and then the fire department agent was still there, and he said, well, okay, if you put these in and you can get them to work and water comes out, you can have the festival. So uh, we did have the festival, and in order, in order to make it unusual, we went up to a place called Riverside, California, just east of Los Angeles, about an hour east of it. It's where they, they train wild animals uh, for Hollywood films, to jump on people and not hurt them, and they had cheetahs and tigers and lions and and uh, leopards and all kinds of very dangerous looking critters, including elephants. So they told us that you could have these elephants, but the trainers of the elephants would have to come with them. So uh, the elephants came. And we, had them, uh, we went up there a little bit early and painted them all different colors, bright colors, red, green, and blue, the same colors as Rathiatra. And they were very, uh, and they're, and they're Trainers kept them from getting too wild or too crazy. Uh, and then uh, at, the, at the end point where, where the, the grassy field was, uh, we had uh, what we called elephant rides for children. And there was a, a, a kind of a palanquin thing on top of each elephant. There were three elephants. And there was a palanquin, kind of a, a self-standing uh, palanquin that sat on top of each elephant. And, the, and each palanquin held about five small children. And each of the children uh, rode around in a circle um, on, on, on their elephants. And they were very happy. And it was just a very grand festival. A lot of eating, a lot of, a lot of uh, rides on animals. And uh, many people came and were, were very impressed, especially Prabhupada, who wasn't even there. He was in England at the time. And he, they, they sent him the photographs. And he wanted to look at the gaze at the photographs, and he didn't want anyone else to be in the room while he looked at the photographs. This was like his dream come true. When he was a little child, about six or seven years old, they had a rathiatra in, in his parents' house, and he pulled the cart himself. So this was kind of this was like kind of a dream come true, seeing thousands of people and uh, a big parade and a big uh, event taking place at the at the rathiatra festival in Los Angeles. And then uh, early Monday morning, I went out and, and, uh, with, a, with a broom and started cleaning up because we, we thought that we wouldn't be able to have this festival year after year if we didn't clean up the whole area. So I picked up lots of plates and paper cups, paper plates, and, and swept up all the dust and, and, and things like that. And it looked, by, by 8 or 9 o'clock, it looked almost like there hadn't even been a festival there. It was, it was very important. And it's a good thing that we did that because the following year, they... The uh, park, the the, the uh, Los Angeles Parks and Recreation Commission said that we're not going to let you have the festival this year, and and we asked them well, why not. One of them was wearing a big cross. I guess she was some sort of a born again Christian. Her name was Judy, and the other lady named um, Rachel Martinez was was uh, okay with it, but but we were but they agreed that that they would tell us that they, we couldn't have the festival, and we asked them why. What, what's it? What, what's why? Why are you? stop why do you want to stop it and we said well those those elephants are kind of dangerous what if someone threw a firecracker at one of them and he reared up and killed a bunch of people and we said well you know people don't throw firecrackers at elephants and that sort of thing so anyway somehow or other the whole thing was held there was a not exactly a court in court session but we had to go before about 15 people when i say we there was about two 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 or three devotees and we had to go before this this group of about 12 people that were on the Park and Recreation Committee, including a lawyer, and uh, and uh, they they were uh, they wanted to hear our side of the story, and we wanted, to, of course, we didn't want to, but we had to hear their side of the story. And their side of the story was their lawyer said, 
oh, these guys could build this thing overnight. I had said over, I had said to them earlier that it takes a couple of days to get everything, to build all the stages, to erect all the tents, to, um, to, to put all the, the changing body things in place, to get the deities there. And right after that, this, this uh, lawyer said, well, if these guys wanted to, they could build it in one day. And their own lawyer, who was a lady, was very, very upset with their attitude. They were trying to stop a festival that everyone really liked. The police liked it. The, the people that lived in the area liked it. And uh, she, she told us at the break that there was about, it started at about 8 o'clock in the morning and it went on till about 5 o'clock at night. And she said that if these people continue to uh, want to stop your festival, I quit. And she was very, very uh, dis dis distressed by, by their attitude. And so uh, we, we actually won the case. The Los Angeles city had to pay something like $12,000 to have the case. And because the, it was kind of an expensive thing for the city, they, they let us have the festival year after year. So that was the, the first Rathiatra in Los Angeles. And, the, and uh, I'll, I'll tell the rest of the story at some, at some point in the future about wh uh, how the, the, uh, the parking lot was given by Donald Trump, who is hated by the media, but really not such a bad guy, maybe. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, so any, uh, any uh, comments or questions about this or anything else? This uh, this uh, uh, speech is being broadcast all over the world. So whatever you say, if it's anything even slightly controversial or or unorthodox, just be careful because because it's going to be heard as far away as Paris, France, Johannesburg, South Africa, New Delhi, India, and other places. Any any uh, comments or questions? <laughs> any any very euphemistic comments or questions? And if they're if they're if they are controversial, that you can ask them anyway, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll answer them after the the class without your recording them. I I, I pray that you're not going to be recording them. <laughs> so any comments or questions or anything that anyone wants to say about anything, about this or anything else, now's the time. Okay. So we'll stop there, and I'll I'll read the verse again. Let us offer. These are the the uh, the different. Uh, sages that, that uh, Brahma created speaking, let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, who by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. He also uh, may he also protect religion for all goodness. And it's kind of interesting to note in, in, in the, the context of this verse that Krishna in a way he doesn't have to do anything but he does a lot of things. He just doesn't step, as it's said in the, in the Shastras, one step out of Vrindavan. And yet, he creates universes, he creates the material world, he creates the spiritual world. He does a lot of things without even having to try. He just has to think and things become manifest. So that's the, that's the superiority of Krishna comparing to us. If we want something done, we have to actually do it or get someone else to do it. But if Krishna wants something done, he just has to think that it should happen and it happens. So that's the nature of Krishna. That's his, his supreme uh, uh, um, dominion over all that be and his supreme power. He's omniscient and uh, he's uh, uh, omnipotent and, uh, and all-knowing. All he's just everything. So any other, any comments or questions? We'll have to, okay, Sergey. The first Rathayatra in Los Angeles, the same story about um, uh, Janananda Prabhu was uh, building that uh, uh, cart and it was having problems with that cart and then resolving those problems just night before the Rathayatra? Uh, well, where that, that parking lot was in, in Manhattan in New York, which is about 4,500 kilometers from Los Angeles. But they did happen at the same Almost on the same day, I mean, almost exactly on the same day, but they're a couple of days apart. Is that what you're asking? Uh, I, I heard the story uh, then the very first Red Hayatra to be held in Los Angeles, there was a problem with a cart and, uh, and it was eventually resolved like a night before. Well, that is another unconfirmed story, which uh, I'll tell in the future. <laughs> yes, Chandra. 
Marge, you probably witnessed Prabhupada's reaction to the New York, the first New York Rathiatra. So, just out of curiosity, how was how was Prabhupada's reaction to the first New York Rathiatra? I don't know anything different? about his reaction to the first Rathiatra in New York. I, I know he was very impressed that they got Fifth Avenue, but I, I didn't, I wasn't with him when he when he heard about it. Uh, and then, but he, but I did uh, hear about his reaction to the Los Angeles Rathiatra, and that was the first one that took place in that city. And he just looked at. He just wanted to uh, meditate on the on the pictures of the carts. The carts were built by a devotee named Lalita Nath, who uh, who built the carts. Uh, he had some some uh, experience in building things. So the the wheels were were uh, were taken to another state. I think it was Utah or Arizona or someplace like that. And the rubber was put on. It was vulcanized. It wasn't just uh, stuck on with glue and other, other uh, adherents, but it was vulcanized, so it means that they wouldn't come off, and they were about maybe f five centimeters wide. Each c chariot had, had four wheels, so there was uh, 12 altogether, 12 chariot wheels, and, and we asked Jayananda to come out and, and uh, see the construction, and he, he said, well, I don't want to go. He was very ill at that time, and uh, they were still being, it was in the, the early days of them being built, and uh, so we, we asked Lalitanath if he would ask Jana, and he said that we told him that he would have to tell a little white lie and say, well, there's a construction problem, and I don't think I can solve it. I think you have to come and... Because Jayananda had a degree in construction engineering, and he asked him to come out. And so it, 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 Jayananda very reluctantly uh, padded out and, and, and to, the, to the parking lot, uh, the Los Angeles parking lot, where the chariots were being built, which is about... Uh, Half, half a kilometer away from <coughs> where he was staying, and somehow he, we pushed him in his wheelchair, and uh, he came out to see, and, and, and when he got close, he heard the Vodhi singing, and then he knew it was just kind of a, a ruse to get him to, to come out. And uh, one of the devotees named uh, Viharini had built three cakes that looked like Rathiatra chariots. The same, they were decorated with the same colors, red, blue, and, uh, and uh, yellow. And they, they had donuts for wheels. And uh, she offered the first piece of cake that was cut to Jayananda. And Jayananda wouldn't eat it. He offered the first cake to the, the uh, young children who were there. And they ate the cakes very, very, uh, very uh, vehemently. And then Jayananda spoke a little. And we didn't want him to talk because he was very weak. So he, and he could barely stand, but he did stand and uh, started to tell about the Rathiyatra in a, in a very weak, warbly voice. And he said that this is something that uh, Prabhupada always wanted. It's a festival that, uh, that's going to be a very wonderful thing that happens. And I don't know how you guys are doing it, but you got permission from, from so, so far from many uh, agencies in Los Angeles. And I, I think this is a wonderful thing. And then he sat down, and then we wheeled him back. So that's, that's what took place. And then, and then shortly after that, he, he departed this world before the Rathiatra took place. Any other comments or questions? Yes. The the wheels were about uh, six feet. I don't know how many what that is in meters in diameter. They had they had wooden spokes, and the carts were very tall. They were about forty feet. I don't know what that is in in uh, in, in metric measurement, about forty feet tall. And they were different. And they had uh, canopies uh, made of silk. Uh, 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 decorating the tops of them. So they, they were pulled by hand by ropes, and uh, they, there was a, a space between each, each cart and an elephant between each cart. So it was quite, an, 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 uh, quite a spectacle. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, please excuse my ignorance, but I didn't understand the connection between Rathiatra and the propo, the, the class. Well, in a way, it wasn't related, but I just thought I would tell that story anyway. <laughs> Thank you. We could say it was a manifestation of Krishna, because as it said in the verse, he manifested the cosmos. So uh, in a sense, those carts were, appeared by the grace of Krishna. There was a lot of, lot of uh, elbow work that went into getting them to, to be, to exist, but uh, that's, they were, they were Krishna, it was Krishna's arrangement. Anything else? Okay, we'll stop there. Hare Krishna.